Rád by som vám všetky privítal. Moje meno je Eduard Horný a chcel by som tu dneska privítať pána Sergeja Olešníkov. Uh, so let me introduce myself. My name is Eduard Horný and I would like to uh, welcome the senior web developer Sergej Olešníkov. He is here to talk about uh, server-side applications and evolution of web applications in general. So, odozdávam slovo, I will give this for to you and from now on it's only in English. Thank you. I have said anything I give back. It's great. So, uh, hi everyone. And today I'm going to tell you about a little bit about uh, Node.js as a solution, uh, web, as, a, as a solution for challenges of web fight to it. Uh, and uh, regions of this solution, so where regions of this challenges, so where are they from? So, we we'll start with uh, history of web, with history of web, um, server side, we we'll talk about server side JS, uh, actually not JS, and uh, discuss uh, some asynchronous, asynchronous and uh, as a result non blocking input output, uh, how actually uh, works uh, event group in JavaScript. Um, some scalability issues which can uh, appear if we use uh, a synchronous approach which requires a uh, single thread uh, code execution. Uh, we will talk about uh, single page applications. Uh, Neem is the one of the most popular stack for single page applications. Uh, some issues of single page applications and uh, isomorphic JavaScript as uh, the solution for all those issues. And uh, at the end I will tell you about uh, a start commerce company. So let me start. Its stories begins in uh, 1990 in CERN when a uh, few really smart guys uh, needed some effective and fast tool uh, to sh for sharing knowledge through the network they already had. And uh, they come up with such a thing. Uh, there was invented uh, hypertext transfer protocol, hypertext markup language, uh, URI, web browsers and web server. And uh, the interesting fact about that, uh, that it's, it took about 12 years to come up with this solution after actually internet was invented. So that like makes us think that uh, technologies appears only if we have need, if we have demand. Uh, it's not really hard to guess that uh, web uh, was fast spread it out, out uh, of the cell and as a result of commercialization it wasn't just enough to have static pages and uh, it required some, some interactivity, some reactions of uh, users actually. And uh, client size scripting appeared, uh, Netscape Navigator uh, Escape Navigator was first to present a JavaScript. And in parallel, uh, we required to show different content from different users, uh, supporting sessions, access to database, and for that matter, we've got server side scripting. And for, for uh, these issues, uh, we used .NET or PHP or Perl or Python or Ruby, whatever. And at some point, uh, the most uh, one of the most uh, step of for web uh, looked like this is lamp. So here we have on the bottom level is uh, uh, Linux. It's just environment for all other levels, but top one actually uh, could work. Uh, here we have Apache as a uh, web server and uh, all its work is just uh, 
receive requests from customers, uh, give it to PHP, and then uh, give and then uh, give answer back to customer. Uh, we have this here. Uh, we have this uh, uh, database there, which uh, which was uh, usually MySQL, usually but not often, of course. Uh, that was just uh, Postgres or Oracle, whatever. Uh, and that was actually the place where, where uh, data is stored. Um, next level is uh, server-side scripting, and uh, it made um, a uh, lot of work with uh, requests, getting data, rendering to byte. And at the bottom, we have just server side scripting, uh, markup, and style. So it uh, looks pretty nice, but uh, can we make this more easy? For example, can we use the same language for server side and client side scripting? Actually, not first uh, for us. Uh, this nice folks trying to implement it from 1994. Uh, the first uh, server-side test implementation is uh, Netscape Liveware, and then Microsoft ASP technology supported server-side GS2. Um, and uh, in 2008, Aptana Dexter, based on the Mozilla Gator, uh, it's interesting about this project is uh, it uh, existed about uh, less than two years. Uh, in uh, 90, uh, in uh, 2009, uh, we have since 2009, and I have CommonJS, and uh, they just make standards and separate uh, JavaScript from from browser. Uh, and finally, in uh, uh, in 2009, we got Node.js. And uh, so, what is it? Actually, there's no real magic here. Uh, we just have an engine which can uh, execute JavaScript code. We have access to uh, operation operating system. API and we have Excel. And uh, also it's asynchronous. And uh, maybe the main reason uh, why uh, all other implementations are dead, uh, but we all know about Node.js, it's uh, the fact that uh, Node.js is asynchronous. So here's the our world in Node.js, and uh, even here we see that uh, we put callback into create server function so in this we use asynchronous so why? why so asynchronous? we all know that uh, synchronous code is much easier to read, to support, to write it just looks better so why we really need this? well <coughs> Uh, let's start with a synchronous single thread code execution. I still have three tasks and uh, one thread. And the most uh, obvious way to process is to, to process them it, uh, to process them one after another. So we can execute task one, task two, task three. It's uh, good for for programmer. Uh, but if we remember that in web those tasks actually are HTTP requests, then we see that customers need to wait while we process request request from another customer, and this is not cool. Well, what else we can we do? We can create separated threads for, for each request. That's actually how we do it in Apache PHP. So Apache just uh, gets 
get the request and uh, run that in PHP. Well, that's actually good, but uh, there's one issue here. It's really good if we have enough of uh, processor cores for each thread. And uh, uh, since we have more than one thread within one core, uh, operation, operating system do next. Uh, it says, uh, hey, task one, third one, you have about uh, 200 milliseconds to execute on this set. And uh, when time is up, is out, and if task uh, is not executed completely, uh, context switch is, uh, is proceeded. So, uh, operating system just take whole data for uh, for first add, save it, load another thread, and uh, do the same operation in to about 200 uh, milliseconds. And this operation really costly, so maybe it is not a good idea to create separated thread per each request. And uh, with asynchronous model, uh, well, it looks something like this. So here we don't need to wait for one task is executed completely to start another one. So what? What's the difference between this and actually multi-threads executing within uh, of one processor car? So, if we look closer to synchronous execution, uh, we will see that in the life of the most of tasks, uh, there are moments when they just do nothing and wait. And uh, the truth is, uh, if we talk about web request processing, the most time uh, tasks spent for waiting. And waiting for, all, for what? Uh, it's uh, input or, or out. So it's a call to database or file system or another HTTP call or so call, whatever. But the most time is spent for waiting. So let's look at uh, this model. This is the multi-phase request handling. It's uh, the way actually what do. So uh, now here we have uh, first and second users. Uh, who request for input or output, and uh, we have threads for them, and uh, all those threads uh, will be active uh, till they get back their data. And uh, when other users try to get some resources, uh, we create new and new threads. So, good. Well, there are lots of threads, and uh, some of them just do not. And uh, the answer which Nodejs gives us is this. It's uh, V8 JavaScript engine, and it's single threaded, it's asynchronous for execution, and uh, as a result, we have not like input output. And uh, here, this model for, for uh, single, single thread uh, asynchronous asynchronous uh, execution. So, it uh, were a bit more complex, uh, but all our thoughts, all our uh, runtime, and the only place we can we really can, it's this, it's one thread. One thread, and uh, what I should say here? If user one uh, make a request and we need some data from the database or file system. Uh, we delegate it to POSIX, I think that's it's just uh, API to the operating system and for from our perspective it's just uh, a black box. We just say, hey POSIX, do this stuff and when you're done, uh, let me know. So
So, uh, since we will get it to POSIX, uh, we can do something else and we can, can uh, handle uh, request for a second user and we'll get it again. And then, uh, while uh, both first users are waiting, we can uh, handle requests for three and fourth user and we have much less tests and all, the, uh, all of those threads are busy there. They do have some. And uh, when actually uh, and when finally uh, we get data from database for first request, uh, these guys just put go back to the message queue and <laughs> can proceed with this callback and uh, finally return response. So, what the hack actually event loop? So, how it works, what the magic? So, let's start uh, from stack. It's uh, pretty easy, but it's necessary to understand how it works. So, uh, when we try to execute some file, uh, we put some methods to stack. So, at the first, we have main of our file, we define some function, and then uh, when we try to call one, we put it uh, to the stack. And then uh, bar request pull function, and we put it to the stack. We uh, lock something to the console, and we return. And when we return, we pop up. We pop up uh, out of the stack. Uh, then we again bar, we return, remove from the stack. And we're done. Really easy. So, how it looks with a synchronous execution? So, what we got here? Uh, we call, we require express, which makes our life easier because it uh, allows us to work with request uh, more people. So uh, then we uh, just set up a road. So we just uh, say if someone tried to get us uh, with uh, HTTP, uh, we just uh, need to call this function. And in this function, uh, say, uh, do some Query to database and say hello to our customer. So, how it looks? First, we, request, we put my stack, then require, then one of the require, then express, and then redundant the express, uh, and then get. And what happens? At uh, this time, just say no, we uh, actually can't put uh, go back to the stack. But we delegate the stuff to this stack, to the box. And, uh, and uh, that's actually all we have to execute. So, we're done. And when a customer uh, make a request for us, these guys just put call back to a message queue. And here's actually whole work of event loop. It looks at message here and in stack. And if stack is uh, clear and uh, message here is not, it just take uh, first uh, first message from you to stack. And that's it. And uh, we try to execute it and we see here Quite a database, so we we'll do the same, and uh, and we and we're done. When uh, when we get response from database, we again put uh, call back to message queue and event loop uh, put it into the stack. Then have uh, response. Uh, yeah. Then we send response. Go down a bit and go down and come back. So that's our 
current actual work. Another model of uh, all the stuff uh, where you just uh, don't have to imagine this with the message queue in and uh, in stack. This model works too, so it's not uh, so accurate, but I can see what happened here. So see, uh, we see here a uh, view of handlers, and once something is done, it's removed from the queue. Uh, one handler to uh, request to database, which are delegate, and when uh, database is done and we got response, even if we, even if it happened, uh, for example, when handler five executed, we still put response to the end of the queue, and uh, this is really important to understand. Uh, with asynchronous, we don't know actually uh, when callback will be executed, but we do know for sure uh, when callback won't be executed. Uh, so, as an example, here we have a timeout, zero timeout, so logic tells us it should, uh, have, uh, it should uh, write zero timeout immediately, and then we have some blocking code. So, what's going to happen here? Do we really need it? Do we, uh, will we have uh, exactly this behavior? Any suggestion about that? Uh, actually, that's what we have. We have synchronous callback, and then we just wait. And then we, uh, we get executed uh, callback of the timeout. And it's happened because uh, we, yes, uh, callback of the timeout is put to message queue immediately. But, but until stack uh, is not clear, if, until stack is clear, we cannot uh, execute anything from message queue. That's, that's important to understand. Uh, any question about that? No? Oh, okay. And that's actually pretty good. Uh, but if everything is executed in uh, one thread, uh, there can appear some uh, scalability issues. If you have uh, multi multiple threads, uh, then uh, we can uh, use more servers and uh, it's fine. What we can do if we have one more thread? And uh, the answer is uh, service-related architecture. So now within our uh, model, we have just uh, one application gate, and uh, it only decides uh, who of uh, these guys will proceed with customers' request. So and all those services could be spreaded with. Uh, uh, with uh, different servers, uh, with uh, different servers. So here we got uh, general application which uses uh, with the uh, file file uh, system as a data source. Uh, we have here source-wise authorization service which uh, can uh, have some part <laughs> which uh, can get some information from common servers and wish list, but all these guys can work with a different data source and uh, can be split into different services. So that's the way how we can scale, how we can scale uh, our application uh, with a single thread. And then with all this, we have a new, a new thread as a single page application. So, uh, if earlier uh, customer just downloaded application which can be executed right in the browser, 
but there was some restrictions. Uh, the application couldn't get new data from server, and if we if we need new data, we have to proceed new requests. And in this case, uh, some of logic was moved from server to client, and uh, we get something like this. So we have an API for our server. Uh, if in the first request uh, we have some markup and uh, JavaScript, and actually we don't call our application, and then it uh, decides by itself uh, what else data it needs, and uh, it can call server through XML HTTP request or JSONP or web sockets, whatever. And uh, on the Java side, on the client side, we probably have some front-end frameworks like Angular or Ember or Lightbulb. And uh, why it, uh, why it good, and also reason why it good. It, uh, now we have uh, keep only one server for different services like uh, web application or mobile application or even desktop application or just uh, provide the same API from another services uh, with for server to server calls so something like this and uh, and here's the uh, one of the most popular uh, technology stack for simple patch application. It's me. Uh, we have here uh, MongoDB, uh, which is a document-oriented uh, database. It's not actually a relative, it's hierarchic more. And uh, it's actually JavaScript. Uh, here we have Express. It's uh, just framework for Node.js, which uh, makes us, uh, our life uh, more easy. Uh, it helps us to uh, handle sessions and uh, handle, uh, handle requests and all the stuff. Put some middleware. So, uh, we have uh, Angular as content VC framework. And uh, of course, we have Node.js. Actually, from my opinion, it's not necessary to define Node.js here because we already have uh, Express, but it seems like I just make words mean to mean something. Anyway, so what we, hear, uh, what we see here is totally JS, so we can use JS anyway. And uh, that's actually how it works. This is not really how to it actually works, but anyway. So we have client, uh, he works with the web interface, uh, which is processed by Angular, and Angular decides uh, when it needs some data from Node.js. Node.js uh, knows that uh, it has uh, Express for such reasons. Uh, it will get it to express, and if we need some data from database, uh, we call MongoDB from MongoDB driver. So we can uh, use Mongoose for this. But anyway, that's and uh, when it's done, we make it fine. It's pretty simple. But. Is there any issues uh, about uh, simple patch applications? Yeah, probably yes. Uh, first is the uh, initial loading. If you have experience of using, for example, Gmail, of course you have, uh, the first thing that you see it's just loading bar. And uh, it can be quite annoying uh, because we have to Load whole markup, and then uh, and then we 
then JavaScript tried to get another data to render all this page. So when we could, when we uh, open single page application, probably we will see long initial body. Second one is SEO. Uh, as uh, single page applications return, return uh, markup without data for first request and uh, all data is getting by uh, JavaScript later. So when uh, some search robots try to index our page, they get nothing and it, cause, uh, it can cause some troubles. And also duplication of logic. Uh, with such approach we can uh, execute some, some code on the client side to prevent extra uh, calls to server. But we have to do the same, the same code, the same logic, the same logic on server side. Uh, because of uh, security issues. For example, if we have some form validation, we can validate all of this form on uh, front end and uh, don't make requests if we know that uh, form is not valid. But we have to do the same thing on server because of some sneaky bastards who <laughs> don't use our application, they can use Guru or just browser. And uh, it's quite annoying for programmers and uh, if we store the same logic in different places so we always have problem if something should be changed we should change it both sides it's, it's happy. so what we can do about that so since we have we can have uh, JavaScript of both sides Maybe we can uh, uh, share this code. Maybe we can have a framework uh, which uh, decides where our code can be executed when it, when it should be executed. So we can make it. Uh, we can uh, store it in one place and just uh, call on client and on server, and uh, oh, only our framework decides what it should be executed. It uh, gives us possibility, for example, uh, render the page, the full page for robots for first uh, for first visit, so we can load page with data. Uh, but what's important, uh, we will use the same algorithm on backend to render the page and on client uh, to Rather, especially if uh, some data, if some data uh, will appear after some calls. And uh, also about form validation, our framework just can say uh, we can have some piece of code that uh, are responsible from, for uh, form validation, and then our framework can decide when uh, this code should be executed. It's quite a new trend and uh, you could uh, see more how this in ismorphic.net. There are a lot of frameworks and tools for makes for make it possible. So such meteor, there be evil and or visible. So something that any any questions? Maybe something no? Okay. And finally, not just usage. We figure out that uh, it, it's used on uh, web applications. It's really good for web applications. We talked about our, <laughs> about how good it at web applications. But also, uh, not just is used for uh, robots and microcontrollers. And uh, why? No. Probably because uh, Node.js is uh, good at uh, event handling, and that's why it's a good idea to use this for the stuff. Also, it's used for task optimization, uh, such tools as Grunt.js and Node.js. Uh, probably because 
JavaScript is quite simple, and uh, if we have an environment when we can write JavaScript and execute it with access to operating system resources, so it's a nice idea. So probably that's why. And also to stop applications. Uh, so now web applications uh, can be complex, uh, much more complex than, than they were before. So some guys just decide uh, maybe we can do the same things and uh, get something for desktop. We can use uh, JavaScript and CSS to create a uh, storefront, not storefront, to create an inter in interface and we can use Node.js and uh, we all know about it and we don't have to use something like C++ or something like that. Like that. So here's there's, uh, links when, so you can read more information on all this. So yeah, we can use uh, JavaScript also for creating the stock applications. Questions? No? Um, that's all about Node.js. Actually, the sponsor of our presentation is Stubbox. Uh, it's a big company which works uh, with the uh, e-commerce. Uh, they launch uh, a large size, more than 150 since uh, from 2012 to 2014. Uh, there are a lot of people who work for some of us more than. Uh, 500 around the world, actually world, around the USA and the Europe, and uh, it works with uh, leading brands since uh, 1999. It's presented at, uh, in uh, San Francisco. is is the main office, and also in Europe, in Ukraine, in Slovak, Bulgaria. Germany. Uh, and here's the clients, uh, most famous clients. Uh, we worked with, actually, we worked on with uh, L'Oreal, Reebok, Adidas, Antimini, uh, Marata, and Bali. That's probably it. So, thank you. And to uh, you can also ask questions if you have ones. Okay, so that's it. Yeah, you have a question? Uh, yeah, you uh, mentioned many technologies. Uh, which of those do you actually use on your projects? On uh, our projects? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the funny thing. <laughs> uh, the truth is, there are a lot of uh, e commerce platforms. Uh, it's a uh, lot of code uh, when uh, is implemented based things like classes of products or discounts of orders, baskets. Uh, communication with third party payment systems and uh, so uh, we basically work with uh, uh, with uh, e-commerce platform we just use Magenta, Demandware, IBM WebSphere uh, actually uh, I worked on Demandware projects uh, we don't use actually V8 as JavaScript uh, framework but uh, Demandware uses uh, JavaScript for server-side scripting as well. It's not uh, asynchronous, but it's still uh, JavaScript. Uh, I remember, it's, uh, it seems it's Reno, this the uh, giant, uh, JavaScript and giant for Demandware. Uh, and uh, actually, there is some development in start about creating uh, some web, uh, some uh, e-commerce platform uh, on Node.js. 
uh, it looks good, but uh, uh, currently we don't have a ready platform because uh, we need to <laughs> uh, we need to really fast launch size, so we don't have time to write code uh, which will say what is product and what motion and how it should behave. Uh, in, in the word mean, uh, is uh, presented that the, the storage is uh, MongoDB. Uh, so why is that? Why it's not a relation of database? Why is it not MongoDB? Yeah, in the standard way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's fast, it's functional, and... Uh, I don't think it's fast. Uh, it's faster than uh, than it's probably uh, relative database as products. It's not as fast as, uh, for example, Redis, uh, but uh, Mongo is more functional than, than Redis. So for some issue, for some issue, uh, we use uh, for projects uh, use Redis uh, when we need to do fast with something, and uh, when we have. Uh, Complicated requests. If we require aggregation framework which, uh, for uh, Mongo, then we use Mongo. Yes, I, I know that not fast as uh, Redis, but uh, it's faster than. But, but the question was about relational databases. Why? Why? Uh, why not relational databases? Why? Why no? No SQL database. No, no SQL. Why? Why, why no SQL in the standard? Uh, I don't know, maybe just then because everything should be JavaScript, I don't know. But uh, it seems uh, one is faster than uh, Postgres from Apple. Well, commercial data are usually in relational databases rather than in one uh, Yeah, it's, it depends on uh, issues. Of course, MongoDB doesn't support transactions and join and uh, it's himless, so uh, I agree that uh, MongoDB uh, don't match to all uh, things, but it, uh, it's easier than uh, the relation. Easier than me. Yeah. So, <laughs> I actually use, uh, as MongoDB, I actually use uh, Postgres, Redis, and MongoDB. Redis for caching and uh, module for some fun data and uh, Postgres when it's something big. Okay. That's right. Any else question? Uh, but you said that there is an issue about uh, long loading of the single page mm -hmm. application. Uh, is there any promises that it can be better? With promises? Yeah, some. some uh, um, was isomorphic, you mean? Yeah. Is there a way to, to, be, to be better with, with uh, some of those variables? Uh, yes, because uh, we render all the stuff on server and then uh, just show it. So we don't need to build all this stuff in browser. So for first loading, we get something like we uh, had before when we just uh, have ra al already rendered the page, but uh, it's rendered by the same rules uh, on side of that and on the side. So yeah, it's uh, it's uh, not as long. Uh, maybe another question uh, <coughs> uh, about two, two months ago the, the HTTP uh, two was. Uh, Standard standard designs, but uh, uh, are there any uh, JavaScript technologies that uh, can uh, work with uh, promises that uh, comes with HTTP uh, two that a server can can push some data to browsers? Can uh, can push something to browsers? Yes, from server. Is uh, it yeah. HTTP two? Uh, yes, and uh, actually, it can be possible with uh, web sockets. So, uh, some new technologies, right? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Well, but, uh, my question was if, if any of those frameworks work with it or are planning. Uh, even if they don't, they will because uh, it's. Uh, it uh, they uh, they grow really fast. But really, many people worked uh, on this. And of course, uh, it's open source. So mm -hmm. yes, uh, the same about Node.js. We have uh, ECMA six. We have some nice things in ECMA six, but uh, Node.js still doesn't support. But we have some nice forks from Node.js like. IOJS and uh, so even if not do those frameworks, there will be some guy that say, hey, you, you don't support it, may fork it. No, we do. So uh, I don't have uh, information about this, honestly. Any other task? Okay. Thank you very much.